Every gardener knows that healthy soil is alive, it's teeming with billions of bacteria, fungi and microscopic allies working together to convert organic matter into nutrients that plants can actually absorb. But what if one of the simplest kitchen ingredients could wake up that hidden life in just a few days? This experiment took something found in every home, plain rice, and revealed which form feeds the soil fastest, raw or cooked. The results were not only surprising, but they completely changed how many gardeners now approach microbial feeding. Cooked or raw? Why this question matters more than you think. At its core, soil biology runs on carbon. Every microbial colony from bacteria to fungi needs a steady supply of carbon-rich food to stay active. Rice happens to be one of the purest, most accessible carbon sources available. It's rich in starch, which microbes treat as pure energy. The only question is how that energy is packaged. In its raw form, rice is hard, crystalline, and tightly bound. In its cooked form, it's soft, hydrated, and chemically transformed. That structural difference determines how fast microbes can digest it, and how quickly your soil comes back to life. What really happens when you bury raw rice in soil? Raw rice breaks down slowly, almost stubbornly. Once buried, it resists moisture and stays compact, making it tough for bacteria and fungi to penetrate. The starch is locked inside dense granules that require specific enzymes to unlock, and only a few specialized microbes, mostly fungi like Aspergillus and Penicillium, can start the job. For weeks the grains remain mostly intact. Over time though, raw rice becomes a quiet, long-term carbon source. As it softens naturally from soil moisture and microbial acids, fungal filaments weave through the grains, digesting them gradually. Think of raw rice as a slow-release energy capsule. It doesn't spark fast microbial explosions, but it keeps feeding the underground network for months. Gardeners who use raw rice this way often bury small handfuls deep within compost piles or along garden beds. In these low-oxygen stable zones, decomposition is steady, fungal-driven, and free from pests. For a practical ratio, mix one cup of raw rice with four cups of partially finished compost or aged manure. Bury this blend six to eight inches deep where moisture levels stay consistent. Over the following season that zone becomes a fungal hotspot, and plants growing above it tend to show richer, darker foliage due to the improved microbial balance below. Cooked rice flips the entire process on its head, when rice is cooked, the transformation is chemical as much as physical. The heat and water gelatinize the starch molecules, causing the rigid crystalline structure to collapse. What was once resistant becomes instantly available. To microbes, cooked rice is like a buffet of ready-to-digest carbohydrates. Bury a cup of cooked rice beneath a few inches of soil, and within 48 hours the difference is visible. A white fuzzy growth, microbial hyphae, and actinomycetes, spreads across the surface. If you gently uncover it, you'll often find tiny bubbles or a mild sour smell, signs that bacteria like Bacillus and Pseudomonas are rapidly multiplying. Within just three to four days, that small patch of soil feels warmer, smells earthy, and begins showing a darker, richer tone. This reaction happens because microbes consume the accessible starch immediately, releasing carbon dioxide and microbial biomass as byproducts. It's an explosion of life, the kind of activity that would normally take weeks with raw organic matter. For gardeners trying to kickstart a dead compost pile or prepare a bed before planting, this fast microbial burst can make a remarkable difference. The ideal approach is moderation. A handful of cooked rice per square foot buried two to three inches deep is more than enough. Too much can turn anaerobic and attract pests. If you want to use it in compost, blend cooked rice with carbon material like dry leaves or shredded paper in a 1 to 3 ratio to maintain balance. There's also a third option that many experienced gardeners now swear by, fermented rice water. It takes the energy of rice and delivers it in a liquid, living form. The method is straightforward and effective. Rinse one cup of raw rice with two cups of clean water. Stir well, strain the liquid, and pour it into a loosely covered jar. Leave it at room temperature for three to five days. As it ferments, naturally occurring lactic acid bacteria multiply rapidly. Once it develops a mild sour aroma, it's ready. To apply, dilute one part of the fermented rice water with 10 parts clean water 
and pour it directly around your plants or across your soil surface. Within hours, these live microbes begin colonizing the rhizosphere, the thin layer of soil surrounding roots where they accelerate nutrient breakdown and disease resistance. Unlike cooked rice, which gives a short, intense burst of activity, fermented rice water provides a continuous flow of beneficial organisms without the risk of rot or pest attraction. When this experiment was run side by side, the results were obvious within days. The plot with raw rice showed minimal change after a week. Most grains were intact with only faint fungal patches. The cooked rice plot, however, had transformed completely. A thick layer of microbial growth covered the soil, and by the seventh day, the rice was barely visible. Meanwhile, the fermented rice water bed had already shown improved soil texture and earthy aroma without any solid residue left behind. From this, the conclusion is clear. If your goal is immediate microbial activation, cooked rice wins hands down. It's the perfect jumpstart for lifeless soil or slow compost. But for long-term soil building, raw rice still has its place as a slow-feed fungal food. And for those who want a balanced, maintenance-friendly solution, fermented rice water offers the best of both worlds. The shock of this experiment wasn't that rice feeds microbes, it was how dramatically the form changed the timing. Cooked rice is instant energy, raw rice is stored energy, fermented rice water is living energy. Understanding this lets you choose exactly what your soil needs. Whether that's a fast microbial boost before planting or a long-term feeding strategy for a no-dig bed. Healthy soil isn't built by chance, it's built by consistent microbial management. If your garden has gone quiet, don't overlook simple biological fuels like rice. They might just be the key to bringing your soil back to life. If you found this Hydrohaven guide useful, subscribe to the channel, share it with fellow growers, and let's keep spreading knowledge that builds living soil and stronger gardens, one handful at a time.